God bless you, my Patreon people. It's been a while. <laughs> I am so sorry I haven't been able to post anything. And I got messages from a couple of you here this week, so I thought I could go back and do something for the Sunday readings and kind of catch you up on things. And I will try to do something this weekend as well. Um, I'm in my bedroom because my house is full of a extremely large family of Polish people. And I just don't have anywhere to record. So I haven't been able to do what I normally do. And um, I also have a lot of Ukrainian refugees um, who I've had to help with my Russian. And so um, it's just, there's a whole lot kind of coming down on me at once. So it's been hard to keep up with all of my normal um, Patreon messages and just everything in general. So you can pray for me that the Lord gives me the time that I need to do what he's asked and um, the money to do it because a lot of this um, costs quite a bit. So um, let's say a prayer though and look at what is most important, which is from the readings on Sunday. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we will be recreated and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Sweet Jesus, we ask you to pour your Holy Spirit on us and to enlighten us as to your will. We ask you to open our hearts to your wisdom and to give us the strength to follow what you ask of us. We ask all of this through the intercession of Our Lady, Seed of Wisdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the daily readings here for um, Sunday, for the Gospel over the weekend, um, really point us to the idea that God's wisdom and his ways are different than man's, right? Which is why, no matter how difficult things get, we need to continue to surrender to him and his will and to have open hearts and open minds. Um, because God writes straight with crooked lines and he um, did it in the past and he will continue to do it in the future. And um, like scripture says, you know, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. And so when you completely surrender your life to him, then you can trust that um, the way that he's guiding you is what is best for you, right? Um, but as long as you keep going back and you discern things, right, with a humble and a contrite heart. The first reading um, on Sunday was that story um, from Kings where God appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, ask me for anything. And it's, it's beautiful because Solomon asked for that gift of wisdom, but he had to already have wisdom to know to ask for wisdom, right? Wisdom is a gift of the Holy Spirit, and it comes when we're living a right, ordered life with God. And um, he had to have already had a desire for that which was um, most important in the spiritual life for what is true and good and holy to ask for more of it. It kind of reminds me of later on in scripture when Jesus is on earth and he says to those who have, more will be given. And to those who don't have even what they have, you know, or only have a little, it will be taken away. Salom already had wisdom and he realized the giver of the gift was the father and that it wasn't his, but it was something to be bestowed on him. So he had a humble heart in asking for that. And he asked for more and God gave him more, right? And the word wisdom used in that part of scripture, if you go back to the original Greek or Hebrew text, he asked for a listening heart. That's actually what the word wisdom meant in, in the Bible. What he, Solomon asked the Lord for was a listening heart because that's the same thing as what wisdom is, right? So, um, when he asked for a listening heart, um, 
he realized he was nothing, he was empty, and that he didn't have that vision of what was best to do in life on his own. That he needed that given to him from God. He realized his own weakness, even as a king, um, and his dependence on the Father, right? So he asked for a listening heart. But the way, you know, he didn't ask that, like, he be given a big bag of wisdom, right? And then he could sort through what he wanted. Instead, he asked for a listening heart, which is the same thing as asking for a deep relationship with God. Because if you have a listening heart, it means you're always going back to him. You're always asking for the next step. You're always asking what his will is. You're growing in a relationship of love with him. And then through that love, you're granted what you need, right? So it's, an ex it's a single-heartedness that Solomon had, knowing that the riches themselves or the power and the glory or a long life or health, any of those things, um, weren't going to be the most important. That the one thing that was important was an intense relationship with God, always doing his will. And so... Um, it's very beautiful. I think of the books that have profoundly affected my life, Saint, um, Claude de la Colombier and um, Pierre Jean, Jean Pierre de Cassade, right? And um, those priests and the saints who have written on um, surrendering to divine providence and the will of God. And um, that spirituality of, you know, doing your part, but trusting too, right? And cooperating with that grace that God gives you as you surrender to his will, right? Um, you know, that prayer of Father Delindo, who was a um, priest who lived at the time of Father of Padre Pio and was a good friend of his. And um, he taught that prayer, um, Jesus, take care of everything, right? What was it? Oh, Jesus, I surrender everything to you. Take care of everything, right? So and by handing everything over to Christ over and over and over again, and then having a listening heart to his will and then following him, right? Doing it, not letting your own pride or your own um, desires get in that way, your own fear sometimes, right? Um, that's how we grow in a love relationship with Christ and um, we eventually end up in heaven with him. Solomon lived that way before the time of Jesus just by asking God for that loving, living relationship with him where he listened and then he responded. And God gave him um, that wisdom. And he was so pleased with his single-hearted love for the will of God that he also granted him riches and power and glory and everything on earth that a king um, would need to rule a kingdom well. I mean, a king needs money to take care of his subjects. A king needs, you know... Um, the authority to be respected that was which is what real power is in order to guide them to what is good and true and holy so god gave him that um a great respect by what the queen of sheba respected him and and brought him gifts that he used for his kingdom so those things aren't necessarily bad in themselves but they're not the most important the most important is that single-hearted love of god and that trust that if he gives something it's his will and if he doesn't it's also his will um, and Solomon was able to ask for that listening heart because he recognized what the psalm says, Lord, I love your commands. He recognized that the commands and the word and the direction of God was something worthy of our love and our um, obedience, right? And so um, often in today's world, people argue with the laws of God and um, are turned off to them because they don't recognize that they're the best thing for us, right? Um, and it's sin that turns us from the commands of God. So we pray that each one of our hearts and the hearts of those around us, the hearts of those who we love may be converted so that we um, truly love his commands and then seek them with listening hearts so that his wisdom can fill us. Sometimes when we depend on divine providence, um, Bad things still happen, frustrating things happen, people around us aren't seeking the will of God. So their sin or disorder disrupts God's first plan for our life, let's say. Um, and yet God is so wise and so loving and so merciful, um, so powerful that 
we hear in the second reading that God makes all things work for the good of those who love him. All things. So when you trip upon something in life because somebody around you is not doing his will, um, or you know maybe not living holiness in the way he's calling them to, and it affects your life, right? Um, maybe you have an employer who's not paying you justly, right? That affects you, and it's frustrating because it's not that God wills you to not get paid, but he can make all things work for the good of those who love him. So you take that sin being committed around you, at you, towards you, right? Maybe somebody calumnates you, they lie, they divide your family or your friendships, your relationships. They, you know, sometimes in the church divisions come like that or, um, you know, they hurt you, they're unkind to you. Those are all ways that people are not following the will of God and it affects you even if you're striving to follow the will of God. But if you give it to Christ, he on the cross um, makes all things work for the good of those who love him. He covers them with his wounds and his blood and his love, his healing, his conversion. And he not only gives the people harming you grace to convert or a remedy for what has happened. Like if somebody sins against you, there's a concrete wound. He can heal that wound in your life, in their life. He can heal those relationships. But even if somebody's hard-hearted, um, and pride prevents them from receiving that grace that God's giving them, he can still make your life better because of the wrong happening to you, right? Um, and we see this in the lives of the saints all of the time, right? So, um, you know, maybe somebody owes you money and they won't give it to you and you have a great debt. If you pray really hard, you are blessed with the graces of God because you're suffering unjustly and maybe he'll send somebody to give you even more money than what is actually justly owed to you as a gift. And then those people will be blessed by being so generous, right? Um, you know, maybe somebody, you know, has lied about you and um, it ruins part of your reputation. God can send people to speak the truth. It's not even you. That the remedy to that ill will make virtue shine out in your own heart by being forgiving and humble and loving. And um, their remedy can help. I think about like Facebook, how um, they cut my rosary off, right? For a long time. And I was praying with 100,000 people a day and it's I can barely stay on with five or six, right? But it made me write that book, Mornings with Mary, so that people could have it in their homes. And then it got sent to Pakistan and it was translated into Urdu and then eventually into Dari in Afghanistan. And um, those prayers that never existed in these countries are now available to those people. That is God taking the concrete sin of people at Facebook who are trying to prevent me from doing good in the United States or there on that platform and using it for a greater good, right? So there's never a reason to fear surrendering to divine providence because even if God cannot convert the hearts of those around you who are choosing sin, even if you're striving to have a listening heart to follow his will and, you know, um, you know, he says, you know, go to this university and then the university, you know, Satan tempts somebody to reject you or Satan tempts somebody to, you know, refuse you financial aid or to allow you in that group. God can still make it work for your good in some way, right? He always has a back door. He always has a plan B and C and D. And it's not even um, uh, worse. Sometimes it's even better right? And him being outside of time, all powerful and all loving, he um, makes this all happen simultaneously, right? So it's not like somebody does something bad and he has to take five minutes in heaven and think about, hmm, what's my plan B? He sees it all at once and he does it. And then the gospel is so beautiful. It's all about that single-hearted love and desire we're called to have for Christ. And Solomon lived it by seeking after wisdom, a listening heart, the providence of God, his divine will. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again and goes out of joy and sells all he has to buy that field, right? 
So it's, you know, Solomon already was a king. He already had some riches and some power and some glory. He was willing to throw it all away to have that single-hearted love relationship with God to be filled with his wisdom. And God blessed that by giving him that and then everything in return. But he asks each of us to have that kind of a desire to know and love and serve him above all else. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it, right? He knows what's worth. A merchant would buy up, would, would search for pearls and sell them, right? To make money. And they may, we were talking recently with a friend of mine. They said, well, if he already found it, why did he have to buy it? He could have been like a middleman, right? He was working for a bigger company or something. So he found the pearl of great price, but he thought it was worth giving everything up instead of selling it to someone else to buy it himself, right? The kingdom of the heaven is like a net thrown in the sea that collects every kind of fish. And then you separate it into what's good and what's bad, right? The kingdom of the heaven is like a head of a household who brings from his storeroom both old and new. So God is always doing new things and giving a new wisdom, but it's dependent on that relationship we had with him as of old. Solomon had a relationship with God and some wisdom. That's what was old. But he asked God for something new in addition, and God did that. He built upon that foundation he already had to give him something more, right? And as we're following divine providence and um, you know, we're trying to spread the message of the gospel. Yes, sometimes people come and plant weeds in our field. Sometimes, you know, you get varieties of fish that you bring in, right? Sometimes even like on Facebook, right? I have a variety of friends that are interested in things. You know, some might have a, a, a very good heart and they're seeking truth. Others might be there just to destroy what I'm doing. But we welcome everyone with great love, right? And the kingdom of heaven invites everyone. And then it's our responsibility to make sure our hearts are single-hearted, devotedly in love to God, um, and that we don't sin, that we follow his commands. And at the end, he'll judge. Did we respond to that grace? Did we have a single heart? Did we seek his providence and wisdom and plan and will? So that's my reflections from Sunday. Like I said, I am so sorry. I've been behind on everything. Um, but I do have a large family living in my home, so I can't even like record where I do or keep up with things because it's all set up and I had a, nothing set up right now, <laughs> right? I usually run from room to room doing things. Um, so I ask for your prayers, um, that God arranges everything for them according to his will and for these Ukrainian refugees and for all the different projects I have going on in life and for our needs here. Um, the financial needs of supporting these refugees, the financial needs of the Fiat Foundation. Um, my Russian translation of Out of the Darkness is complete, and I desperately need a couple thousand dollars to print those, um, like tomorrow. Um, I need a couple thousand dollars for the French translation in the Cameroon, but I put Russia as my first priority right now. I need um, a couple hundred dollars for the mailing to the seminaries of this missionary handbook for priests and seminarians. Um, and just a lot of needs for the foundation, the Children of the Cross, and the Bethany House of Crucified Love and Prayer. Um, so I ask you for that. Um, and that the Lord provides the grace and the time to do all that he is entrusting to me, which includes prayer right? Just the time to keep my heart single focused on him, to listen and to respond with grace and peace and love. Um, so glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Um, and if you are not a normal Patreon donor and you would be interested, I beg you to do that. Most podcasters, artists, authors, missionaries like me have Patreon accounts that supply their entire life. And my life is like a religious sister and people give donations so they can do the exact same work that I'm doing, but I'm not getting the financial help. So you are truly building the kingdom of heaven 
when you send me donations. Patreon's helpful because I know every month I'm getting things, but a one-time donation is also super helpful. You can do it to the foundation for our books and our projects, or you can do it to me individually to um, help with these other things that I can't run through the foundation, like the Ukraine, the different families I'm helping and the needs that I have in this house for, you know, they don't necessarily fall under that mission, but they are heavy burdens. Um, so thank you. I will put that contact of Patreon up on my Facebook when I put this one up too. So God bless you. We are together in prayer and I am so grateful for you.